it gives me something to like roll with instead of just like rambling aimlessly <laughs> about like gear and specialty equipment. That makes sense. Okay, so we're gonna do our story. We know that already. All right. Uh, so what, what's your what's your gear for the for the typical setup, the typical day? Uh, so in the studio. I um, have a, I shoot on a house of lead, um, and I have a 120mm lens attached to it with a 1.2 converter, um, which I may take off the converter, like, depending on the size of the product that I'm shooting, and then I've got four um, Profoto studio lights that are set up. Um, they're all behind the product that I'm shooting, because you have to reflect into the, sh like, into the product. So. The lights are all behind, the product is on the table, like uh, up front, and then I'm, uh, and I'm reflecting all of the light back into the product. Um, and then I've got my house of blood here in the middle um, on a tripod. And then uh, all of the images have to be stacked together. And so like I shoot and move the lens, shoot and move the lens. Um, until the whole product is in focus. Um, I'm shooting into Hasselblad's proprietary software, uh, which is called Focus, um, and then using uh, Helicon focus stacking um, to like to make the fully resolved images. Uh, so that's in the studio. And then uh, when I leave the studio and I'm shooting uh, jewelry in the wild, as it were. Um, then I'm using a, uh, generally a Canon 5D Mark III um, and a 100mm macro lens, almost exclusively that lens, uh, just because it's true one-to-one, -one, like for the jewelry. Mm -hmm. um, and while I do include people in the picture, um, that lens also doubles as, as a portrait lens. Um, and so it totally does everything that I need to. Like I don't need to get any other lens for it. It's so supremely sharp, um, and it has like internal um, image stabilization, like a hybrid image stabilization system that is like really ideally suited for shooting jewelry. Um, so that's it. That's my setup. Is uh, a Canon 5D and a 100 millimeter and an reflection. Always a reflector. <laughs> okay, so why are you using two different brands of cameras and two different cameras alone anyway? Uh, so the uh, the Hasselblad is mounted on um, a big tripod in the studio, and it like it has to be stationary. It's got to be locked down um, because we are creating these like humongous files. Um, it's it's a 50 megapixel um, digital back on the Hasselblad and then you know you're stacking anywhere between like I don't know, 2 and 20 images depending on the piece like depending on what you're shooting um, together and so you end up with files that are like a gig you know in size each um, and it's not it's not a running around camera you know like there is no way to treat it it's like it's big and it's bulky and it's gorgeous and the resolution is there and it does exactly what i need it to in the studio um, when i am shooting uh outside of the studio when i'm shooting it's cool when I'm shooting outside of the studio, like when I'm shooting jewelry um, for social media and stuff like that, it might also go into um, like an e-blast. Um, occasionally they might use like a small uh, picture in their like quarterly publication. Um, but uh, it, I don't need nearly the resolution for like our social media images that I do for like web and magazine and stuff like that. Um, uh, I guess despite the fact that I'm sizing them down significantly uh, for web, but also they do translate like the big jewelry images to billboards and things like that. They want to have large files on hand so that they can use them for you know any number of advertising projects. They are very very heavy advertisers, um, and so uh, anyways, the social stuff I need lightweight and I need to be able to run around. Um, and I am, I'm a Canon 
lover, I'm a Canon user, like, through and through, I'm also a freelance tech card for Canon. Um, and uh, at home, I shoot with a 1DX body. Um, a 5D is just like a super lightweight, big, pretty files, file, like gorgeous resolution, beautiful color output. Um, and it's so easy to work with. And so I can like run with it and just like bang out a bunch of pictures. Um, on the fly versus like what I'm doing in SKU, which is really quite different. So, okay, so on the fly, yeah. Since we're not, uh, I personally, you know, shooting weddings, I'm not gonna have a huge hustle blood, <laughs> yeah. beautiful thing set up, you know, uh, something stationary and things like that, bulky. But uh, the five D, you know, like how do we, how do we take that? that in studio, some of those techniques, and then apply them uh, on the outside, in the wild, as you say. Yeah, indeed. Um, uh, there are a couple of key tips, I would say. Uh, shoot, shoot at a high aperture, like as, uh, you know, I shoot weddings sometimes, and, you know, I think, uh, especially just in portrait photographers in general, you know, like, we love to, like, push the really low apertures and get, like, really, you know, like, creamy backgrounds and, um, you know, make stuff look really dreamy and cinematic and stuff, um, and then you forget to change your aperture, like, when you go to photograph jewelry, uh, which results in you getting, like, the front of the, you know, piece of jewelry in focus and, like, the back of it is out of focus or, like, you know, uh, like one ring is in focus and the other ring is out of focus and then you're like, oh shit, you know, like I have one picture where this ring is in focus and then I have another picture where this ring is in focus and, you know, like maybe I can do something like that. But, um, but what you need to do instead is remember that if you are photographing jewelry, um, like on the fly, crank your aperture all the way up to f16 if possible, I would say at the bare minimum f11. Um, when I shoot social media, that was like one of the earliest things that I learned, um, you know, grabbing the camera and going from my typical, like my uh, prior way of shooting to uh, becoming a, you know, like a jewelry photographer, a, a almost exclusively jewelry photographer, is um, that I had to start remembering to use these much, much higher apertures um, so that you get the whole ring in focus, or, you know, at least all of the important parts, you know, or, like, the whole necklace, not just, like, one side of it and then the other side is out. Um, and then the other thing that is absolutely critical, and this is, this is what you do in the studio, you reflect your light into the piece of jewelry. Um, you don't have to have any kind of external lighting, like, any kind of off-camera lighting or anything like that if you go outside you do have to have a reflector. Like, you, um, if you're in the studio, all of the studio lights are behind the product, and then, as I said before, like, all of my ref reflectors are up front, and then I'm bouncing all of the light. If you don't bounce light into the product, then, one, it doesn't naturally get enough light, even if you're out, like, on a bright sunny day, um, it's not going to get light into the inside of a piece of jewelry, which is where you really need, it, like, the light to be, to make it shine. Um, you can do that with a, just a reflector on the sun. Um, the other way that I'll shoot if I am doing social media is with an on-camera flash that's pointed at my reflector so that I'm bouncing that light into, again, I'm just reflecting the light. You can't put direct light in front of a piece of drawer because you're going to end up with uneven lighting and specular highlights, like really awkward. Um, but if you reflect the light into it, it's soft and it's pretty and your pieces are going to look um, just like they should, but don't, don't rely on nothing, you know, don't think like, oh, I can just put it in, you know, a nice area with, like, some soft light and it's going to look right. You really have to reflect light into it, whether you're indoors or outdoors, to make it sing. Um, and so those are my two tips, like, shoot a high aperture and reflect light into it all the time. Ooh. Great.